Bleach Bypass, famously used on Saving Private Ryan, 1984, and a host of other movies. Uh, this is one of those looks that I feel like people talk about with, with bated breath. Like there's this mysterious pinnacle of looks that if only we could hit this magical look. And it's one of those things where the more I hear people talk about it, uh, the more I just think it's wildly misunderstood. I want to give you the wisdom that you've been looking for, that nugget of gold, that meta truth that has been hidden from you for so long. It's really pretty simple. You add contrast, you decrease saturation. That's it. People really have to stop making this more complicated. All right, let's make this more complicated. Uh, today, what we're going to look at is how you can implement a bleach bypass type of look uh, at three different levels. So one, very simple that anyone can do in basically any software. Level two, that's maybe a more intermediate approach. And level three, uh, I'm going to show you kind of one of the many ways that I've implemented this on projects. Uh, also, if this is the kind of content that you enjoy, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay around and the little notification bell just to make sure you don't miss future content here. So with level one here, we're basically going to use an approach that can work in any software that you have available. So this is uh, shot on a Blackmagic camera. So what I've done is I've pulled in the uh, the Blackmagic manufacturer's LUT to take us from uh, the, the fifth gen uh, Blackmagic log just into Rec. 709. Now that that's in place, let's add the two primary building blocks of, uh, of Bleach Bypass. We're gonna increase contrast, so we're gonna crank that contrast up, and then we're gonna decrease saturation. And uh, we'll kind of play between these two until we find an image that we like. So basically what's going on in this uh, node tree is we have uh, the transformation to Rec. 709, and then we have, in this node, we have uh, Con and Desat. So there we go, there's level one. I'm just going to save a quick still of this um, as we jump on to level two here. So as we go into level two here, we need to have a little conversation about the science of film. And that's because in level one, you can have a really brain dead approach, that's fine. But in level two, like this is information you need to know if, if you're gonna try to develop some good bleach bypass looks. And that's, we have to talk about how film actually works. So, so the way film works is uh, when you get a camera negative, if you're just doing like black and white film, Basically what's in that negative is light sensitive silver halide crystals. And when light hits them and you develop them, the, uh, the, those little silver halide crystals transform into metallic silver. So when you're looking at a black and white film, you're really looking at these little specks of metallic silver, which I just think is really awesome. Now on color film, these silver halide crystals are still there, but what we add is we add the color dye because we need colors. So you have multiple layers of film that are sensitive to different colors, right? You have like layers that are sensitive to red, green, and blue. And when light hits the film, it still activates those silver halide crystals, but it also activates the little uh, color dyes in each layer as well. But the problem with color film is you really don't want those metallic silver pieces still in the film. You want to get those away so it's just the color dyes that remain. And that's where we introduce these two steps called the bleach and fix process when developing color film. So the bleach process is what turns the metallic silver back into silver halide. And then the fix process clears all the silver halide so you just get the color dyes remaining. We're talking about bleach bypass. This is when you modify some of that bleach and fix sequence to leave some of that metallic silver in there, maybe all of it. And what visual result will that bring? Well, it will bring an image with higher contrast and lower saturation. You're basically adding a black and white layer of film on top of the color. But that's not all. The next and arguably just as important of a question that we have to ask is, well, what piece of film is this bleach process happening on? Because in a traditional film system, so in a traditional analog system, the camera captures a negative but audiences don't see that negative. The film gets edited to a release print, which is a positive. The positive print is what people are gonna see. So now you have two pieces of film. Which one of those are gonna get the bleach bypass? Because let's think for a moment, if you were to do the bleach bypass on the camera negative and you screw it up, you've ruined the one recording of that day. A traditional analog film process actually has some steps in between the camera negative and the release print. What you do is you take the negative out of the camera, you transfer it for what they would call an interpositive, and then this interpositive is what you can create more negatives from. So you take the camera negative, copy it to an interpositive, and then this interpositive, you can copy as, you know, as many times as, as it is reliable to many other negatives. Then these internegatives is what most often the bleach bypass process happens on. So we get, the, we get the bleach bypass process right here, and then that gets transferred to a release print that gets sent to theaters. I realize that's a lot of information, but we can use our knowledge of traditional film systems to give us better bleach bypass results. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, start in with a little bit of color management. So in the uh, the group pre-clip, I'm gonna take us from uh, black magic to DaVinci wide gamut. That's just gonna make things for a little bit more standard of an operating process. The next thing we're gonna do is, do you remember how when we talked about the process, we said that the bleach bypass happens on the internegative before the release print? 
Well, the release print would have some aesthetic implications. So what I want us to do is uh, just for this example, one release print is the uh, Kodak 2383. I'm gonna drop that release print on the end. Now, uh, this is not expecting DaVinci wide gamut. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to grab a, uh, a color space transform here. So I'm just gonna label these. So we're gonna say uh, 2383. Uh, over here, we're going to say this is uh, to, I'm just gonna say to uh, CIN, but basically uh, inside this color space transform, we're gonna take DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate, which we're working in, and then output to uh, Rec 709 and uh, the uh, Cineon film curve. Now, for those of you who are a little more color nerds like me, you might be saying, hey, Barrett, use the ADX10 method, right? So this is level two, right? This isn't level three. We're gonna stick with Cineon. I think it's a more well-known method. So that's why we're not doing the ADX10 method. Though, if you did think of that, I'm proud of you. Basically what we're doing here at the end of the node graph is imitating kind of what a release print would do to the image. Now, upstream of that, right? If we were gonna affect the, the internegative in this case, let's add some contrast. I'm just gonna say con desat here. Let's add some contrast and decrease the saturation and see what results we get. All right, so let's, uh, let's start increasing the contrast here. I'm liking that. Decreasing the saturation, and that might've been a little too much. I'm gonna increase the contrast a little bit more. Introduce a little more saturation back into things. Ooh, do you see already we're starting to get a little bit of a better result? Uh, something I'm noticing is I'd want to bring these uh, this, these highlights down a little bit. I feel like we could have a little more aggressive of a, uh, a roll off here. I'm just gonna make this a uh, pretty quick uh, adjustment here. This is a little more rough than I would probably normally do it if I was developing the look for the film. But it's something to. Uh, kind of make the, uh, the, the roll off a little more milky. I don't love what that's doing to his face. So let me, uh, let me bring that up a little further. Now I might've hit this a little harder with the contrast. I think I might back it off slightly, but you'll notice that we're already getting a better looking bleach bypass type image because we understand the film system that it probably would sit within. We'd understand that the bleach bypass happens independently of the release print. Now, maybe you're looking at this and thinking to yourself, like, Barrett, this isn't Bleach Bypass. You have no idea what you're talking about. Bleach Bypass looks like this. This doesn't look like Saving Private Ryan. Can I tell you, whatever you have in mind of what Bleach Bypass is, it is not a one-to-one -one parallel of everyone else's experience. Uh, there's an article on, uh, if you go to the free resource page linked in the description, I have some stuff about kind of the history of Bleach Bypass. And what you'll find is there is not one single system that describes this process. People are tweaking all over the place. I'm kind of telling you what the most popular solutions are, but if you think that bleach bypass is some singular look or some singular LUT that you can throw on your footage, you are wildly misunderstanding how this has been used in the past. Bleach bypass is at its base, added contrast and decreased saturation. From there, you are making creative choices based on your story. We need to stop getting hung up on some sort of forensic recreation of a certain movie and start asking, how can these principles serve your story? When you start getting into that mindset, you will significantly improve in your storytelling as a filmmaker. All right, let's move on to level three. Now, the primary issue with level two here from a professional colors perspective is it's generally considered a bad practice to use a creative LUT like this to be the end of your color management. Because if for some reason someone would ever want this to be HDR rather than SDR, uh, you would be really stuck if all your creative intents were uh, stuck in this one single funnel into SDR. So I'm gonna show you one of the, uh, the many ways I've implemented something like this into uh, my projects. Now, traditionally, the way we uh, kind of finish our color management pipeline, right? We kind of start with, we take the camera space into uh, DaVinci Wide Gamut, so, right? Black Magic into DaVinci Wide Gamut. Oftentimes, what you'll see people do at the end is you'll take, you know, a, another color space transform here. Let me grab it, uh, the uh, DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709. Oftentimes, you'll see something like this on the end of the footage, where we take DaVinci Wide Gamut into Rec. 709. Now, that's totally fine. But because this is level three, I'm actually gonna use a uh, slightly different output transform. This is Juan Pablo's 2499. It's just a different way of going from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709. I'm not here to say it's better or worse than the color management in Resolve. I, I use both, but because this is the top level, I'm gonna throw you a little extra spice in this example here. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a uh, LUT that I've created on my own. And this is a, uh, it's, it's a pretty strong look, but it's, it's got a lot of that, you know, uh, shadow cooling and neutral cooling, a little bit of density added to it. Um, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a more bold look, but this look does exist in a, a scene referred space, meaning you'll notice that I'm not transforming anything to Rec 709 right here. These are purely creative adjustments. So I'm going to label this uh, look here. And this is more true of how I would build this out because I want to separate my look from my transformation from uh, the, the working space DaVinci Intermediate to Rec 709. That way, if I need to go to HDR, I can simply tweak my output transform. Next, let's add those two core elements of uh, bleach bypass. So I'm going to desat is what I'm going to add here. Um, now, for this example, I'm just going to use my uh, color panel here since I think it's slightly more intuitive to work with. We're going to increase contrast and DC decrease saturation at the same time. I'd probably do something. I don't want to completely drop all the color out of his face. I'd probably end somewhere around there, just kind of for a, uh, a preferential look. Now, what happens if we add a touch more contrast? Nice. I like that. And from there, if I wanted to level it up even more, I might look into adding some textural elements. Like I might pull a, a dehancer here. One of the things that I, uh, I, I don't like about the tool is that it always starts in a, uh, it always starts in like a look state. I'd, always, I'd prefer it if it started all zeroed out. So uh, one second, let me go in and uh, basically disable all the nodes in here. Uh, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little film grain. We're just going to pick a nice soft one. So maybe a... Uh, uh, I guess this is on YouTube, so you're going to have trouble seeing grain. Uh, yes, I'm gonna, I'll pick a little bit more of a, uh, a potent grain for you, so hopefully you can, you can see it uh, on YouTube with all the compression. And then I might also go in and add a little bit of a, uh, a bloom to the image, just helping things wrap around the edges. I don't think any of these highlights are, uh, are high enough that we'd really get a big impact of halation there. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about Dehancer, I actually have an in-depth review. Uh, you can check that out. I'll put the link in the description. I also have a discount code that I mentioned it. So if you want, want to save a little money, uh, check that video out. So there you go. There is Bleach Bypass at three different levels. Uh, I will say the third level is really the one that I would use in my own professional work, but I hope to illustrate that you don't have to do something as complex as I do to get the idea of Bleach Bypass in whatever tool you're currently using. I also hope that you take away that this isn't some monolithic, magical look, right? When we say Bleach Bypass, that can mean many different things. And understanding the analog history of this technique actually will help us build better looks. If you want to learn more about bleach bypass and film, go ahead and head over to my free resource page. There's some additional articles and places you can look and read up more about kind of how this whole crazy process of film works. Also, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and uh, drop a comment of something that you're taking away from this video. It's always helpful for me to see what were the pieces of this video that were valuable to you, just so I know uh, where to direct things in the future. All right, I'll see you in the next one.